one event dwarfed all others, of course, in the last few weeks of the year. But 1963 as a whole has been a year that has made us sharply conscious of death. Piaf sang. We cried on call. She could not stay to sing us more. Then Cocteau, man of letters and taste, to join her laid down pen in haste. But lest their haste should seem unkind, Piaf has left her voice behind. Pope John. Pope John, he dreamed of peace as the world rolled on. Now he has put the world away. May peace be his today. Hobbs of the Oval set up a splendid score. Mike Holliday could not bear to linger more. And from beginnings, to say the least unlikely, Chris made the Express's morning headlines nightly. Huxley and Frost, McNeese and Brack, have gone where there's no looking back. Lord Nuffield drives out among the stars where parking's reserved for Morris cars. At Westminster, the Echo side when dedicated Gateskill died. Lord Evans prescribed his last royal dose and Elsa Maxwell's parties close. Lo, the cartoonist gave us a glimpse of the immortality of the blimps. Monjou, professionally French, from life's big screen has turned away, leaving his carefully tilted tile to his cher collègue, Chevalier. Two black sheep have left the fold, one left of his own accord. Guy Burgess, traitor, osteopath ward, be merciful to them, O Lord. One day in Texas, death rode out to take America's bright sun. Then Texan death rode out again, which did no good to anyone. Midnight next Tuesday, Old Lang Syne will usher in election year, and the nostalgic strains of that haunting melody will be the signal for politicians of all parties to set to work 
on compiling the pledges and policy statements with which they will presently proceed to overwhelm the sturdy electors of Britain. Surprising as it may seem, some of these pronouncements will not mean exactly what they say. Divine their true meaning, skilled interpretation may be necessary. We shan't be here for that purpose, so as a guide to interpreting the kind of statements that will soon be showering down in torrents, we present a glossary of political jargon based on actual statements made by the parties at the last election. The Conservative Party. So long, the Conservative policies of sound currency, currency and its expanding trade are continued, and unity at home maintained, full employment is safe. This really means unemployment will rise to its highest level for a quarter of a century. We shall use flexible monetary and other measures to keep the cost of living as steady as possible. This really means... So the value of money will continue to plunge with the purchasing power of the pounds worth only 13 and 9 as a result of Tory rule. Conservatism is more than successful administration. It's a way of life. It stands for integrity as well as for efficiency, for moral values as well as for material advancement. A senior minister will resign from the government after lying to Parliament about an adulterous affair with a prostitute. A junior minister will be forced out of office by unfounded rumours connecting him with a homosexual spy. And the Attorney General will be arraigned for unprofessional conduct. There will be a big programme of hospital building. We shall complete exactly two new hospitals. <laughs> we pledge ourselves to ensure that pensioners continue to share in the good things which a steadily expanding economy will bring. A million pensioners a week will have to undergo the means test of national assistance in order to avoid the starvation. And now, the Labour Party. We shall restore the free health service by abolishing all charges, starting with the prescription charge. Of course, it was me who passed the original legislation which made prescription charges possible. But we don't expect you poor suckers to remember that after all this time. <laughs> Commercial long-distance road haulage will be re-nationalised and built into an integrated transport system. This is another loudly trumpeted policy which we shall drop without a word to anybody, least of all to our own party members, who are still under the impression that it is an integral part of our programme. The Liberal at this election, we hope to consolidate and improve our position as the first stage to the eventual formation of a liberal government, which will be able to create a liberal society in this country. This really means... We shall not gain a single extra seat in this election. In the course of the next parliament, the unpopularity of the government of the day, real parties is in office, will bring us a temporary increase in support which we will hysterically acclaim as the start of a revival. But in the succeeding general election, we shall win even fewer seats than before. The whole pointless cycle will then be repeated ad nauseum until Mr. Grimman reaches his 100th birthday and is made a life peer. <laughs>